Okay, so we're still working with the colors for Drosophila's eyes, and this is my second attempt at this because the first time I just drew the pundit square too small, and there were so many small notes to put on the chromosomes that I found I couldn't fit it all in, or it looked awful and would have been way too hard to read. So let's see if I can do a better job on the second attempt. Because both of these parents are heterozygous for both traits, we're going to have a 4x4 four four pundit square. Let's get that down right now. And as usual, when we start one of these, we look at the two parents and try to work out what gametes they can each produce. Because this fly is heterozygous for both things. We're going to do FOIL to figure out the gametes she can produce. First gives us big B, X, big V. Big V. Outside gives us big B and the little V this time. Inside we get little B, big V. And last we get little B, little V. Oops, sorry. I thought little b, my hand did something else. Little b, x, little v. Good. Okay. From dad, we foil again, and we get big b, x, big v. Outside, we get big b, y. Inside, we get little b, big v. And then we get little b, y. All right. Normally, when we do a square like this, we expect to see 9, 3, 3, 1. Will we get that this time when there's X sex chromosomes in play? I'm actually not sure. Let's watch for it. We'll see what emerges as we go through this. So, first offspring, we get big B, big B, and then we get big V twice. I'm trying to make these Vs exaggeratedly big so that I'd be sure to read them later. Big B, big B again. X, big V. Y. Big B, little B. X, big V. X, big V. And big B, little B. X, big V. Y. Big B, big B again. Uh, this is big V, little V. Two big Vs, X little V, Y, big B little B, big V little V, big B little B, X little V, Y, big B little B, two big Vs, Bigger. Big B, little B. X big, whoops, sorry, X big V and Y. Our first occurrence of little B, and there will be others. Uh, two big Vs for the sex chromosomes. Little B again. X big V, Y. Big little for the Bs. Big V, little V. Big V, little V. X, little V. Y. Two little Bs. X, big V, X, little V. And two little Bs. X, little V, and Y. Whew, okay. So that's all the bugs. Now, what do they actually look like? What do we get for phenotypes? Well, here we have, first of all, just looking at the sex chromosomes, we have XX, which means it's female. And it has the 
Big B and the Big V traits, which in combination produce wild. Here, XY means male. And again, we get the dominant B and the Big V, so wild type eyes, meaning red eyes. Here we have Big B and Big V. It's heterozygous this time, but no matter, it's still a dominant trait and then the other dominant traits, so this will be wild again. Oh, and female. Female wild. XY makes this one male and wild once again because big B, big B. In this row we'll probably start seeing some different eye colors. XX means female. Big B and big V, wild again. XY makes this one male. Big B and little v, here it is for the first time. According to the list they gave us on the previous page, when you have Big B with little v, you get vermilion eyes. Here we have XX for female, and Big B, Big V, back to wild eyes. And XY makes this one male, and Big B, little v, there's vermilion again. I wonder if vermilion shows up more often in males. We'll have to watch for that. That's something we can pick out after we've done our frequencies. Uh, here we have two X's, so female bug. Big B and Big V, wild type. XY makes this one male. Big B and Big V, wild type. Two X's means female. Little B and Big V, is that the brown? Yes, that's the brown, according to the chart at the top of the page. Sorry I couldn't fit that in, but the amount of space that I need to ju just make this Punnett square readable meant that I couldn't do it all. XY for this means this is a male fruit fly, and little b big v once again gives us brown eyes. XX, female, b big, v, big b big v is wild type. XY, male, big B and little v is vermilion. XX means female. Little b and big v is the brown. And XY here makes this one male. Little b and that's a little v gives us white. I hesitated on the white because the example they show in the chart, they talk about a homozygous bug, meaning little b, little b, x, little v, x, little v, which is not exactly a match here, but it's still the recessive trait for the b gene and the recessive trait for the vermilion gene, so I believe that should still come out to white. I don't see any other any other way that could work. So let's do some counting and see what comes out of this. Female wild type happens once, twice, three times, four times, five, six. Okay, well, so much for 9331. We just got a 6. There are 6 out of 16 female flies with wild type, meaning red eyes. Male wild type, we have 1, 2, 3, just 3. Okay, so males. Wild type, so the wild type trait shows up more in females in this cross at least. I don't know if that's generally true, but it certainly is for this example. What else have we got? Male vermilion happened once, twice, three times. Male verm. I'm just going to put verm, I'm not going to have room to fit it in. And there's no female vermilion. Interesting. 
we have female brown happened twice two female brown one male brown and one male white six nine twelve fourteen fifteen sixteen good we got them all Okay, so there are the frequencies, not what we were expecting, and it's because there's interaction between these two genes. They're not independent. It's not like the color of tomato plants and how tall they are. Both of these are operating on the eye color, and so that's what throws our numbers off. That's why we don't see our usual pattern here. But interesting pattern. There's definitely, as you expect to see with sex-linked traits, there are some things like wild color or vermilion color that happen more in males or more in females. That's that's expected, and we'll probably see more of that in our next, ex next examples too.